Hi everyone, um, welcome back, or if you're new here, welcome to my podcast. My name is Melanie, also known as Cozy Cardigans on um, Instagram and Ravelry. So check me out there if you want to see what I am up to, because I'm always on there. Um, so yeah, welcome back guys, episode four. So, got another shorty for you today because got a lot happening right now. So, I've just been, I've been knitting as much as possible for sure. Um, but yeah, not as much as I'd like to. So, um, yeah, let's get started. Today is really cold. So I'm wearing knit on knit. Oh, so I'll start on my finished objects first. So this, let me just take this off really quick. It's freezing right now. So this is the Rift Tee by Jacqueline Seaslack. So let me get up and show you. So it's like just a simple knit tee. I knit it out of, I like to tuck it in a little bit, but it's a little longer in the back. And it's got this nice detail here, the side detail. And it's like this muted pink color. And I got this yarn in Japan um, a while back. Put this back on, it's cold today. So I got this yarn in Japan a while back. Um, it's like a cotton linen blend yarn. Um, so it's perfect for like a t-shirt type thing. So it worked really well for this. Um, I really like this tee. I've never really made myself like a summer like t-shirt type of thing. I'm always making sweaters or cardigans or something like that. So this is really nice. It has, it's just a regular like crew neck and then there is an option for a v-neck but I'm more of a crunic type of gal. And then there's also options for a long sleeve version if you don't want the short sleeve. So that's cool too. Um, yeah, I really like this. Um, I really want another one actually, or maybe even like a tank top version somehow. It doesn't really work out because for the sleeves you don't really knit you only knit like this ribbing part, so it's like a boxy shape. If I get up, I would show you, but I'm too cold. But, um, so it's like a boxy shape, so I guess the only way to make a tank top would be to like do my own decreasing on the side, but that takes calculations, and this is just a nice, simple knit. So yeah, I really like it. It's really comfy. It looks really good, like knit on knit. This is another, oops, another hand knit cardigan that I've made. No, it looks good together with other knit stuff, so that's cool. Um, yeah, good casual tee with some jeans. Tuck, do a little French tuck and it's good to go. So I really want some more t-shirts. I really should make some more. But yeah, so finished this, which was great. And then I've also finished these simple let me see if i can straighten them up just these simple vanilla socks um it's just like a helical stripe so i used two different two different colorways to make this um and then like just a random heel color so i finished those the only thing about this one this looks really big on screen but the these are actually a little too big for me I usually I don't know why I cast on so many stitches but or like I do toe up so and I always forget how many stitches my feet are so when I increased I increased too many I think so it's a bit too wide for my feet and it does kind of get baggy on top for me for my ankles so I feel like I should have like knit like should have deleted this much maybe 
so it should be like this but it's like this but it's okay i think i'm just gonna throw them inside the wash and um put them in the dryer see if that shrinks it a little bit um might felt but i'd rather have it shrink so yeah so it's just a simple vanilla toa pattern helical stripes um i love helical stripes now this is this was a lot of fun to have like these little stripes in and it's like a really good way to use up um if you have any random little balls of sock yarn left over they're really fun to just mix and match and just make a whole new sock out of so because i was saving those for i do have like a granny stripe blanket that i'm crocheting but i think i'm gonna use my like worsted weight heavier weight types of yarn for it and just use my precious um sock weight yarns to make a bunch of more socks because now that i know i could do this i'm just gonna i'd rather make socks than put it in a blanket if that makes sense i'd rather use like my heavier weight stuff for um that blanket but um so I have that, that is an okay cast off or finished object. It's not, not happy with the size, but it's a pair of socks, so I can move on. But yeah, those are just my two finished objects. They've been on my needles for a super long time. So I'm glad they're done. Um, I have a bunch of other stuff I'm working on. I am currently in the middle of designing a sweater. Um, I've got a yarn sponsorship, my first yarn sponsorship from um, the Fiber Company, which is really exciting. Um, they sent me, I'll show it to you guys. So they sent me these guys. So I'll be knitting two different samples for my sweater pattern. Um, you could kind of see a version of it in my first episode where I finished that sweater um so what I'm going to do is to make two different neck options two different sleeve options so one option would be a classic crew neck and then it would be like a scoop boat neck type of neck and then one option for the sleeves would be like a classic like kind of like this but a little more fitted probably have like a bit more just like a regular decrease type of sleeve. And then the other sleeve option would be like what I had or what I was wearing in my first episode where it was just no decreasing and then just bind off so it makes like a bell shape, like a big bell shape type of thing or type of sleeve. So I'm making two separate, um, Two separate samples so that you could see all four options um so one sample would be with this um by the way this is the fiber company cumbria yarn cumbria fingering and it is so nice seriously guys i'm so happy that they trust me enough to make this pattern um they were so kind and so gracious to send this to me so that I can knit the samples up for you guys. And I highly recommend knitting that the sweater that I'm making out of this yarn because it seriously makes the best fabric. Um, but anyway, so this is 100 grams, 328 yards of, um, that's a really nice blend. Let me see if I can find, it's a Martian wool, merino and mohair. And so it's like wooly, but still so soft so it ha doesn't have any of that scratchiness that like that I kind of would expect for like this type of a wooly spun like it's not super rustic which is nice as well because for when I knit with rustic yarns it it is definitely more hard wearing but also it's a bit more itchy and it's more of like a more down-to-earth type of style i feel like when that it gives to fabric but this is wooly still but it also gives a bit more i don't want to say elevated type of style but 
Um, it's, I don't know how else to say it's not as rustic and itchy looking. But yeah, it's super soft. So this color is the Isel, I-S-E-L colorway. So it's just like a classic light gray. Um, and then I also have this one. Um, and this is the Castle Rake colorway. So it's this beautiful, like muted purple colorway. So I'm currently knitting both samples and writing the pattern up. And I'm hoping to get it ready for test knitting by um, mid-February, I'd like to say. It's just so that um, I am trying to make as many size, um, as many sizes as I can. So I think you will have up to nine sizes. And I really do want to give the people who are in the um, larger size spectrum to have as much time as they need to knit their sweaters because they are larger and therefore take more time to knit than the ones in the smaller spectrum. So yeah, I wanna make this as inclusive as possible, have as much feedback as possible, especially because it's my first design. So yeah, so I'm probably gonna get the pattern ready by next, mid next month and have it ready for test knitting. So if you guys are interested in test knitting, um, I'll probably talk to you guys more in depth about the sizing and things like that. Um, I mean, you guys haven't even seen any of the pictures, but if you guys are interested in test knitting, just um, you could email me. I'll put my email below and the um, bus sizes that I'm looking for for the test knitting and um, yeah, you could just like email me about it or something if you are interested um, based off of the pictures that you saw um, in the first episode. So yeah, I'll probably have more images and information about it later on since this is still, I just got the yarn like last week. So, or beginning of this week. But yeah, so more info on that later, but Thank you, Fiberco, for supporting me. Um, I really appreciate it. I'm super excited to finish this design. So I'm working on that right now. This is the majority of what my knitting time has been, is designing this. And then also, I'm currently knitting up. This is the only other thing I'm making right now. I do have a twig sweater on the needles as well that I haven't knitted on that since I last showed you guys so um that's like nothing really happened to it yet just because I've been knitting with this and also knitting this so this is the it looks like a tube but it will be a hat for my husband it is made of uh black welsh mountain wool this is definitely super rustic not sure if you could tell but it is a little itchy on the itchier side, but he does like that kind of texture in his beanies. This is like my fourth or fifth beanie I'm making out for him. So it's just his standard one by one rib beanie that he likes. Um, Cause he likes to uh, roll it up a couple times like this. It needs to be a bit on the longer side he doesn't just wear it straight on like this so still trying to finish this this is a bit of a quicker knit because it's made of uh, their yarn is um i believe like i think they said it's dk but it's more of like a worsted um but yeah so knitting that up right now hopefully i'll be done by the end of this week because he wants it so yeah there's that that's like the only knitting stuff that i've been working on really and finishing this and the socks so yeah um spinning i have also been spinning so i am currently filming a little not really a how-to because i feel like i don't really have the um what do you call it 
I, I've never done it before. So, I mean, I've spun before, but I've never done a fractal spin before. So this is my first time fractal spinning. I am recording it and I am planning to um, put up the video sometime next week or next, next week, depending on how busy I am. But I mean, got this much done. So this is the uh, fiber that I got from Three Waters Farm. Um, I'll link their Etsy store below. But look, oh, let's see here. The colors are so pretty. So this is the um, fractal spin that I'm doing right now. I still have a bunch left over. So this is the um, this is the ply where like you split apart that half into many other halves. So I have a bunch of little little cakes of parts of that half that I still need to spin up. I think I still have like four more. Oh, it's so soft. Mm. So nice. Well, anyways, so I'm working on that. That is this. And then I still have to uh, spin the big chunk of the other half for the second ply. And then I'll be playing those together and hopefully it will make a beautiful yarn, which I'm sure it will because the colors look really good together. So no matter which colors mix with whose or which colors mix with what color, it doesn't matter. It'll just look really good. I'm really excited to see. I love the barber pulling effect, um, which I know some people don't like, but I really dig it. So I'm really excited to see that in this. And I've also, um, I recently received like a Etsy gift card, so I bought another another four ounces of not this colorway, but from this is their logo by the way from Three Waters Farm. I got another I think a fin wool, so a different type. This is a uh, merino, hundred oh no mer eighty percent merino and twenty percent tessa silk, super soft. But I wanted to try another one of those their bases and I've got the fin wool one. I think, I'm not sure if it's 100% or if it's mixed with anything, but I'll show you guys when it comes in. So I'm really excited for that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all that's been happening, really. Yeah, it's not much, but it's been a bit busy. The designing process, it's like, a huge learning curve, but there are a lot of resources online to help, um, which is nice. Um, yeah, we gotta get back on it. Today's another design day, which is great. And I'm also having some nabe, which is like a Japanese hot pot that you, it's like you put a hot pot full of vegetables and um, tofu and fish in the middle and you just eat out of it. It's like the perfect um, cold weather type of food and today it's like pretty cold in LA which is probably not as cold as it is where most of you live. I see on Instagram like negative 30 or like it's snowing and it's still sunny as you can probably tell it's still sunny and it's a bit windy but it's probably like lower 60s and I'm freezing so um yeah so I'll be enjoying my cold weather foods and designing and yeah so that's it thanks guys for sticking around um I know some of you have asked um in my previous one of my previous podcasts I think episode two I believe I talk about how I made, um, I totally forgot to talk about this, but how I made this um, Rift T, um, how I converted it into a fingering weight pattern because it originally calls for a worsted weight. And as you can probably tell, this is definitely a fingering weight um, yarn that I used. I used a fingering weight with the size, US size four needle. So I believe a 3.5 millimeter needle uh, I'm not sure but US size 4 needle and the pattern originally calls for a worsted weight yarn I believe 
So I talked a little bit about how I kind of convert, like figure out the numbers for how much to cast on and like how much to increase, decrease and all that stuff. And uh, some of, a couple of you guys were interested in it. Um, so I'm wondering if I should make a video of that too, maybe after I finish the spinning video. Hmm. It's just, the thing is that it would be pretty boring. It would just be me talking with about numbers. But I mean, if you guys are interested, let me know. Um, I know a couple of you are. And yeah, um, thanks guys for sticking around. Um, it's really nice to be able to just talk about knitting for like 20 minutes out of the week because I don't really talk about it to anybody else except for my husband. And he kind of, not that he doesn't listen, he's a very good listener, but um, it's nice to talk to people who have something to, something else to say about it other than, oh yeah, that's cool. <laughs> so um, thanks guys for sticking around. Um, you can find me again on uh, Instagram as cozy underscore cardigans and on Ravelry as cozy cardigans to see like all my product info. I try to update it as much as possible, but sometimes I do not. And um, I'm always on Instagram, so if you want to say hi, that's the best place. If you do or if you are interested in test knitting, um, yeah, just send me an email. I'll leave my email down below so you guys could let me know if that is something you're interested in, and then I'll just uh, be sure to update you personally when I am ready to um, have the pattern tested. So just let me know if you're interested in that. And then, yeah, I think that's about it, guys. Um, so yeah, see you next week or on Instagram if you're on there. But yeah, thanks for talking to me. Well, well you didn't really talk, I talked. Thanks for listening to me. Um, yeah, so I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Thank you.